everyone. Thank you very much for being here. My name is Alex Kiesling and I am the CEO of Quora Computing. I'm very excited to be here meeting so many of you in person finally and thrilled to have the opportunity to tell you a little bit about our company, who we are, what we've been up to over the last two years and how Atom, uh, neutral Atom quantum computing can be useful to solve your problems today, not necessarily just 10 years down the road. We are a Boston-based startup working with neutral atom, uh, a neutral atom platform for quantum computing that has been developed over the past several years at Harvard and MIT in the Boston area. And what you're seeing on screen right now is a picture where each one of these purple blobs is an individual atom that is being held in place in a vacuum chamber and used as a qubit. The reason why we use qubits is because through our experience, we've learned that uh, neutral atoms are the most natural qubits for quantum computation. And they have several advantages that allow us to really extract a lot of power out of them uh, when it comes to quantum computation. Uh, a few of the things that make them nice to work with are that they operate at room temperature. There's no fabrication involved. Uh, these atoms are identical one to each other. And in our case, we use Rubidium 87 for, for our current machine. The coherence properties of, of these atoms are excellent and they have been used for many years as standards for timekeeping. And this is something that we can now exploit all of the tools that have been developed over the past 20, 30 years to start putting them towards good use in quantum computation. Lastly, neutral atoms in this setting do not interact with one another and they basically don't interact with their environment. We introduce the interactions in a controlled way and this allows us to create very large uh, quantum processing units or QPUs and to implement parallel logic in our QPUs. This work, as I was mentioning, was born out of uh, research that is coming out of Harvard and MIT. And among our founders, we have four immensely talented physicists, professors both at Harvard and MIT that have been pioneering quantum science over the last few decades. So what I'm presenting here is in some ways the culmination of seven years or so of, of a particular project at the university is co-advised by Misha Lukin, Marcus Greiner, uh, and Vladan Vuletic in collaboration also with Dirk England. But really what it is is the outcome of many years of research and development for neutral atoms as a basis for quantum computing. So we are using licensed technology that has come out of these universities that now forms the core of what we do at Quera. To give you a little bit of a history of where this started, in 2015 at the university at Harvard, we had an empty room and an idea, an idea that we could take individual atoms and take the fundamental unit of matter to perform quantum computation in a way that was scalable and that allowed us to get to large scale quickly. Within two years of that, we had a system that allowed us to coherently control 51 atomic qubits. This was in 2017, still at the university. And the two years after that, we're incredibly successful in demonstrating that we were able to generate large entangled quantum states, that we could implement quantum logic in a parallelizable way, and that the coherence properties of the system were unparalleled. At that point in 2019, Quera was founded. And it was founded with the explicit purpose to take this technology outside of the research lab and into the hands of customers to experience firsthand the power of quantum computing using neutral atoms. Over the last two years, development of the technology has continued both in the academic setting, but, but also at Quera. Earlier this year, our, our collaborators at Harvard have been able to demonstrate breakthroughs in, in science using up to 256 atoms. And what you see on screen represents 
the flexibility that, that the system has to, com to reconfigure the topology of the QPU by repositioning the atoms uh, and creating something as uh, Quantum Mario. Now today, at Quera, separate from, from the university setting, we have a machine that is ready to go with very similar properties and more engineering behind it to enable our users to access these, these QPUs with 256 atomic qubits. For that, we have built a world-class team that brings together people who have the experience in building these, these atomic physics systems but also that supplements it with engineering, both in hardware and in software, to be able to control these systems in a seamless way. Moreover, we're developing the next generation technologies by integrating higher degrees of freedom in the control that we can have over these QPUs, uh, and we have expert in photonic technologies that are enabling that. But we're not just a hardware company. We are building the full stack, and for that we have specialists who are experts in developing applications and algorithms that are designed with the architecture in mind to extract as much power as we can from this, from this neutral atom quantum computing platform. So our strategy is to identify near-term hardware efficient algorithms with the highest degree of achievable quantum advantage and by, by working together with academic and industrial partners, we are targeting those applications that have the most relevant use to our customers. Here, what I mean by hardware efficient are algorithms that are native to the, to the architecture, where we, we can use the flexibility of being able to restructure the topology of the QPU and control the internal interactions between the, between the qubits to use the minimum amount of resources to get the maximum amount of output. And there are many examples of, of uh, hardware efficient algorithms and applications. For today, I will focus on two, on quantum optimization and quantum simulation. But there are many others, and if you're interested, we have a booth where you can come and ask us more. Now, when talking about hardware efficient encoding of applications and algorithms, I first need to mention what our hardware uh, is good for. And what these atoms do is, initially they are completely non-interacting, which is what, what gives them these very long coherence properties and very easy manipulation of individual qubits without interfering with the other ones. Within the neutral atom, we have access to many different energy levels with different properties. So we can encode quantum information in long-lived uh, qubit states that have been used in the past for timekeeping and that have very long coherence times. However, to, in to introduce interactions in a controllable way, we can couple one of the electrons in the atom to a highly excited state. And what this does is that it enables us to implement conditional logic where within a certain uh, radius, only one atom can at once uh, flip its internal state. This is what gives us access to, to, internal, to conditional logic that translates into controlled knots, controlled phases, but more importantly, we can, we can map out the connectivity of our QPU by drawing lines between the, the positions of atoms that can interact with one another. And this defines a graph, which is key to a lot of the things that we do with this, uh, with this type of technology nowadays. The reason why this is important is that we can explore applications in quantum optimization by tackling a specific problem, well, this is one example of the problems that we can tackle, uh, known as the maximum independent set. And the maximum independent set is quite a powerful formulation of problems. This is a combinatorial optimization problem that can be expressed in the following way. Given a graph with a set of, uh, of vertices connected by edges, the problem is to find the largest number of vertices that are not connected by edges. The problem formulation sounds easy, but the problem itself is immensely hard. It is an NP-complete problem. However, 
when looked at in the context of the capabilities of our, of our QPU, what this means is that we are trying to maximize the number of atoms that are flipping their internal state while under this cons uh, constraint of what we call the Rydberg blockade. And to do that, we, 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 can, we can use only global controls and design algorithms that enable us to efficiently approximate the maximum independent set of these types of graphs. This is useful in a variety of settings. Uh, we are exploring applications in many different fields, but to highlight a few of them, there's network design where, for example, when, when building a new infrastructure for, for example, a 5G network, we can optimally use resources by solving this kind of problem. Similarly, to de-risk investments, the same tools can be applied to portfolio optimization problems. And of course, there are many others such as social network analysis, and this has implications, for example, in tracking the spread of diseases. The other application that I will focus on is quantum simulation. <clears throat> and I know many of us have seen this over and over again, but it is worth quoting Feynman again, uh, who in 1980 told us that nature isn't classical, damn it. And if you want to make a simulation of nature, you'd better make it quantum mechanical. And by golly, it's a wonderful problem because it doesn't look so easy. And it is not easy, but it is possible. And with the kind of platform that we have, with our machine, we can take a physical system that has a high degree of complexity arising from the quantum interactions in its constituent uh, particles and map that exact Hamiltonian onto our QPU. This enables us to explore different properties that matter can have, and it allows us to to design new materials with designer properties. Here I can give a, a, an example of just this, uh, this past week, our collaborators at Harvard were able to demonstrate for the first time the observation of uh, quantum spin liquid. And this is something that we can do in a controlled setting in this kind of simulation and take the learnings back to design new materials that will exhibit the same kinds of properties. Beyond that, there are problems that are very hard to solve numerically, not just in finding uh, ground states of, of interacting systems, but particularly in understanding and modeling the dynamics of quantum systems. This has wide range implications, and this is something that has no overhead to again implement in a quantum processor using neutral atoms. Recently, we've been looking at the, uh, at the the work that goes into simulating high energy, uh, high energy physics systems uh, along the lines of lattice gauge theories of nuclear physics. And it turns out these things can be approached more efficiently by converting them from a quantum problem into another quantum problem that has an easy to solve way on our platform. Now this is what we have. This is what we play around with and this is where we develop new uh, algorithms and applications for our customers. However, coming soon, you will be able to directly access our resources through brackets in this upcoming year. So we are looking forward to seeing you all come and, and explore what neutral atom quantum computing can do for you. Before leaving, I, do, I just want to mention, this is our starting point. This is where we are today, but there's still a lot that we can do with this technology without having to reinvent the, the entire architecture. While I talked about encoding problems in, in a geometry in a global way, we are building the tools to do the more, um, the, the, a digital gate-based quantum computing uh, approach. And for this, we are partnering up with several other um, um, partners to develop photonic integrated circuit solutions to enhance the degree of control that we have over our qubits. This, we believe, will take us 
very quickly from where we are today with 256 qubits to 1,000 qubits in two years and up to a million by the end of this decade. Here's our team. Thank you very much for your attention. I can take any questions now. Yes. Sorry, I missed the beginning. Maybe you talked about it. What are the native gates that you have in your systems? I'll repeat the question for the recording. Uh, the question is, what are the native gates in the system? Uh, the native two qubit gate or a multi-qubit gate is a controlled phase operation. When we do this in a digital approach, we have direct access to a controlled phase operation that allows us to couple only the state one to the state R, and that implements the phase. Um, in a quantum simulation approach, in an analog Hamiltonian simulation, the native gate really is given by the interaction and the topology itself. Any other questions? If not, I'll thank you again very much for your attention.